He's a good boy. Yes, he is. Okay, so we're working on not being a complete dick when he's in this room with me. Oh. <laughs> not sticking his head when I eat. I've got food. And um, he's trying to stick his head in my food. I freeze when he comes near. Remove eye contact, turn my head away. Hold my breath a little bit. Yeah! Reward the good choices and ignore or prevent the bad ones. Take that whole thing. And he's eating nice around my hand too, not eating my hands off like he was the first day. It's a good boy. You gotta lick up the mess. I'm gonna feed you. You are such a cutie. But yeah, he's still gets really antsy even in these two rooms. He wants to run around the house, um, but he chases the cat. So that's, he can't be loose. He's either gotta be on a leash. The cats have to be completely away. Bay has to be away, because he'll fight back with Bay. Uh, he'll push back and they just, they just don't get on. No, I'm just gonna say the no, and then I'm going to prevent what I don't want, instead of confronting him too much, I said the no. I'm gonna let him think. This was a good example. Food will not happen because he's on the table. Thank you, sir. But I won't reward him getting up first. So if I reward the end of that sequence, it started with him getting up. So that one doesn't get a reward. Um, he will get a reward for coming up, sitting or sometimes not get a reward at all. He needs to learn to wait. But because he does have a food confrontation thing, I'd much rather reward polite choices and him still begging than um, try and go for perfection here. Let me take a mouthful. Now I'm just looking at him and saying, what can you offer? He offered a sit. I didn't ask for a sit. The key here, is get him thinking for himself. Very polite, sir. Very calm, very polite choices get rewarded. And I have to, when he loses his poo and starts scratching at doors, and if I put him outside and he starts barking too much, I either put him in the crate or the basement and we start over again. He might have a mini fit, then he falls asleep. When he's good, I get him out and we try again. When he's too naughty, I put him away. And so I, I'm using um, the ability to be loose. Thank you, sir. Good boy. I'm not giving you food for that choice, but good boy. Good choices. He's reading quicker. He's making choices better. Instead of pushing and pushing or getting upset, because he gets upset. If you correct him too hard, he'll get snippy because he's scared and reacting. Oh, ding, 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 ding. Winner, winner eggs and sausage at dinner good boy very nice now i'm gonna put some cheese in one of his toys um he started oh sorry sweetheart you're fine see he's a little jumpy still occasionally he does trust me now though i have some queso that i got just for putting in one of his toys now he wants to come and help himself i remove temptation I don't yell and confront. I'm just going to guard it, hoard it. I'm going to make it just more uncomfortable for him to do the wrong thing than hideous. And then when he backs off and goes, wait, it'll come to me. And because I do so many repetitions of this and I started making it really hard, like sitting at the table is tempting. I'd start by just getting something from the fridge and standing in the kitchen. And he would have had to molest me. <laughs> physically maul me to get it off me. Um, and he knows it's coming. It's not like I don't do this three or four or five times a day. Here's your treat. And this is getting him to touch toys because he also wouldn't use his bones. He doesn't really play by himself. He's not much of a self-soother. He either wants attention from another animal or directly from you or a long walk and he's becoming be too much of an athlete so he is a working breed and I do I am concerned that he has a lot of energy needs anyway that's just what we're working on and I just walked away from the table so I'm gonna go now